Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top, woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Go and into what is truly a historic day here for the Indiana Fever, for Pacers Sports and Entertainment, for our city and for our state. I'm Pat Boylan, Fever play-by-play -play announcer, and on behalf of Pacers Sports and Entertainment, I want to thank all of you here for joining us this morning. And for everybody watching and following along online, we welcome you as well. As we welcome in for the very first time the number one overall draft pick in 2024, Caitlin Clark, here to Indiana. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items for our media member. Yeah, let's hear it. Caitlin Clark to Indiana. Before we begin this morning, a few housekeeping items for our media members in attendance. We'll have a microphone going around. We kindly ask that you state your name and media affiliation. We'll begin here with an opening statement from Caitlin, but she will be joined on the podium by our general manager, Lynn Dunn, and our head coach, Christy Sides. You may direct questions to any of the three of them. And for our media members watching here on Zoom, once we're done with the in-person portion, we'll move over to the Zoom questions. We kindly ask that you utilize the raise hand function for that. Once our press conference is over today, we invite anyone for Forward. There will be a picture opportunity with Caitlin, with Lynn, and with Christy. And for anybody that needs access to this after the fact, it will be available on NBA Content Share. All right. Let's welcome this Hawkeye to Indianapolis. It is my honor to welcome, for the very first time, the 2024 WNBA Drafts number one overall pick here to Indianapolis. Please welcome Caitlin Clark. Caitlin, floor is yours. Well, I'm super excited to be here. I've never had to give an opening statement before, so this is a first for me in a large crowd. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm super happy to be here. Um, thank you, the Fever, the Pacers. Um, this is a dream come true. Like, these are the moments you dream of. Uh, obviously, Tamika Ketchings is here. Like, that's pretty incredible. Somebody I grew up idolizing. Yes, yes. But like I said, after I got drafted, like I can't think of a better place for myself to start my career, uh, a place that loves basketball, supports women's basketball, um, and an organization that really does things the right way, um, has championship pedigree. So 
I'm just very thankful that they have a belief in me, and obviously my parents are here today. My two brothers aren't here. My little brother had to go back to school. He actually missed his flight out of New York City after the draft, so I think he did it on purpose, but um, thankful for them, and you know, couldn't be happier to be here. So thank all of you for coming, and I can't wait to get started. All right. All right. All right, thank you, everybody. We will now go to questions in the room. You can raise your hand, and we will get a microphone to you. Sam has it there. We'll start first question on the right. And a reminder to please direct your question and to please introduce yourself with your name and your affiliation. Hi, Caitlin. Wheat Hotchkiss, feverbasketball.com. First of all, welcome to Indy. Thanks. Uh, you're uh, the second consecutive number one pick for this franchise after Aaliyah Boston last year. When you look at this roster with players like Aaliyah, Kelsey Mitchell, Melissa Smith, Erica Wheeler, and so much young talent, what are you most excited about joining this team? Yeah, I think like you said, like there's just so much talent on this roster, and I'm very thankful. Obviously, Aaliyah has been one of my teammates before with USA Basketball, and I know firsthand how great she is. And obviously, Erica Wheeler, somebody that's been having my back, and we're not even really teammates yet. So uh, I can't, you know, I'm super excited about that. So I'm a vet, somebody that's been in the league for a really long time, and obviously as a point guard, you need somebody to lean on and, you know, have your back and ask questions. You know, I don't have all the answers. Not everything's going to be perfect. So going to need people like that uh, to surround myself with. And I think this, you know, organization and this team is, you know, the perfect example of that. Go first row on the right there for Greg. Hi, Hi. Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, oh, let me do this. You like, you like that? <laughs> I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I, I do that at my family after every game, so... Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me, and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is, you, you didn't have to turn pro. I kind of thought you would, no matter what. But how much did Indiana mm -hmm. have the number one all pick because of the things you've said and the driving distance to Iowa, just everything? I'm just wondering what role that might have played. Yeah, it definitely played a huge role, and I actually played at the exact same time as the draft lottery on the night it happened. I'm not sure exactly who we were playing, but... Um, I was hoping that Indiana got the first pick. It would have made my life a lot better. So uh, when I saw that, I, I was pretty excited. And, you know, obviously that's not every single reason of, you know, why I wanted to leave and, you know, be done with college. I think, you know, I was just ready for a new challenge and something new in my life, you know. Felt like I kind of had d done everything at Iowa that I possibly could, and we did a lot of amazing things. But um, to be able to come here and stay in the Midwest and, you know, it's only five hours from Iowa City, seven hours from where I grew up, um, you really, you can't script it any better. So um, it was really, it was really a no-brainer for me. Go second row on the right. Caitlin, Jeff Dubroff, KCCI out of Des Moines. There were 6,000 people here on Monday for this draft watch party. Mm -hmm. You talked about Indianapolis being a place that loves women's basketball. When you hear that number, just what goes through your mind and the passion they're going to have for this team and for you? Yeah, I think it just speaks to the excitement of what this summer is going to bring. And like you said, women's basketball in this state is pretty incredible. Grace knows that better than anybody else. Like, I hated playing at Indiana, and they hated me. So hopefully a lot of them turn into Indiana Fever fans. But, I mean, they hated me for good reason. It's a hard place to, to win at. And, um, yeah, I mean, 6,000 people just to, to stare at a screen and see who gets picked in the draft is, you know, pretty incredible. So I expect, you know, big numbers this, this summer. And, um you know, I think just people couldn't be more excited about where this organization is going, the people that is on, are on this roster and the potential, but also just women's basketball in general. Like, people know it's special. People know this draft class was special, the talent level across the board. Like, um, you know, I think it's just going to continue to elevate the league and, you know, take it to greater heights. First row on the right. Chris Hagan, Fox 59, loud talker. Uh, my question's for Coach, I mean, GM Dunn. Uh, You've had rosters throughout the years with a lot of elite players. And what advice would you have for Christy about managing a roster like that? So many great players and only one basketball. Well, I think Christy understands that from her past experiences with the Chicago Sky, uh, with the Atlanta Dream, and then with coaching the top players in the world, Sue Bird, Lauren Jackson, Elena Deladon in Europe. So I, I'm confident Christy and her staff are prepared for that. But I'm going to segue over, and I just want to say thank you to the, all the coaching staff at the University of Iowa, Lisa Bluter, Jan Zinson, uh, and what a great job they've done with this young lady. And it's a powerful moment 
moment for me because I was a longtime Christine Grant fan uh, who was, I call her the mother of Title IX. And so now we're seeing the fruits of what they did there. And then she's also had a thankful <laughs> parents support system. And so it, it's not surprising to me when you've got coaches like them, a family like these people, that she's turned out this well. Second row on the aisle. James Boyd, The Athletic. Um, I guess two parts. First one, with Aaliyah being a number one pick last year, how do you think she can help you just navigate that space, that pressure of being the face of a franchise? And then number two, when you talk about pressure, the weight that you carry in this sport, how much do you think that is your responsibility? Because I hear so often about like you elevating the game and you being the face of this, but do you think it's fair to put so much on you, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think uh, obviously Aaliyah having experience of being a number one draft pick and going to an organization where they're probably going to expect a lot of you will be just be somebody that I can lean on and ask questions. But I think that goes for you know everybody in this organization, top to bottom. Like I don't think it just has to be one person. There's a lot of people that are here to support me, um, and I think that just goes right into the pressure thing. Like I certainly know there's pressure there. That's been like my entire career. But for me, like. I just have fun playing basketball. I know this is a team sport. Like, it's not all about me. It's not everything I have to do. And um, when I've been able to understand that, that's allowed me to play my best, I think. And, um, like, I think it's just using your resources, asking questions, knowing that everything's not going to be perfect, um, and giving myself a little grace. I think that, too, is, like, I'm definitely a perfectionist, but I'm at my best when I allow myself to have a little grace. And, um, not expect everything to go exactly how it should, but at the same time, that's what allowed me to be so great. First row on the right. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, Dave Calabro, Channel 13, met you in Brooklyn. Welcome to Indianapolis. Thanks. How do you keep all this in perspective, off the court, the focus, the attention, the non... Every time I turn on TV, you're on. <laughs> How do you keep this in perspective as a, a human being and a 22-year-old? Yeah, it's definitely hard. I think... At times, like, it doesn't feel real is, like, the biggest thing. I feel like I'm kind of stuck in a dream at times, but I don't know. I think the biggest thing, like, I try to remember is, like, how grateful I am to have this opportunity, and, you know, there's so many people that would kill to be in my shoes when things seem like they're long and they're tired and I have to do this and I have to do that. I just try to remind myself of how grateful I am and, like, I get these opportunities. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have these moments, and, um, you know, it can all be taken away from you in a second, so... Uh, just enjoy every single second of it, give it my best, and uh, I think that'll work pretty well for me. First row on the right. Hi, Caitlin. Rachel Wilkerson with WRTV here. So many little girls were here at the watch party cheering for you, specifically the Lady Blackouts. What can you say to them, and how do you hope to inspire other girls here in Indianapolis? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just continue to be yourself. I think that was the biggest thing when I was growing up. My parents allowed me to have a lot of confidence in myself. They never told me I couldn't accomplish anything. I grew up playing basketball with the boys. Um, and to me, like, I never thought that was like different or weird. It was just what I did. I went out there. I competed hard. Um, I feel like that's a lot of the reason I am who I am today is, you know, I had this constant confidence in myself. And I feel like that's a thing a lot of young girls struggle with today is just having the confidence about them to achieve whatever they want. Um, so I would, I would say that's the biggest thing, but it, it's really the support system around them that instills that confidence in them. And that's what I'm so lucky for, whether it was, you know, AAU coaches I had growing up, whether it was high school coaches, whether it was my parents, whether it was my family, you know, they never told me I couldn't achieve something. Like it was always like, if you want it, you can go get it. You just have to earn it. And I think that's like the biggest thing I would tell the younger generation. Greg, go ahead. Uh, Christy, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Hi. Um, you just were given the keys to that. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> what am I going to do with them? Hopefully we're going to uh, win a lot of games to start. She's going to help us out um, with that. You know, the process um, is really, really awkward. This is actually the first time I've sat in the room uh, with with our new player and so just to have this moment just the few minutes that we had to talk to her for a few minutes uh, speak to her family um, it's, it's incredible for us to have uh, the opportunity to have someone like her um, join our team um, we established a great culture last year and uh, laid a great foundation and to add someone like her and and her awesome support staff um, her family um, to our fever family is just um, in, in all aspects it's just it just puts us in a whole different ballgame 
Go third row on the right. Caitlin, Anthony Calhoun, Wish TV. Welcome to Indianapolis as well. And um, I spent some time with the Pacer players yesterday, and they had a lot of praise for you. So happy that you're part of this city, part of this organization. How much are you looking forward to spending some time with the rival, well, the former rival and Tyrese Halliburton, and, and of course, the Pacer players as well? Yeah, I honestly, I've watched the Pacers very closely. I, my boyfriend works for the Pacers, so I've become quite a fan. Um, but, I mean, Tyrese is, is incredible, and I just want to congratulate him. Obviously, being a named to the USA national team today um, is pretty special. It's a really hard accomplishment, and um, obviously he played for a very terrible team in college, but... Um, <laughs> It's nice to, to be in the same city now and, um, you know, the way, I think the thing I love about him is the way he passes the ball. Like, I watch, watch his game and it's just incredible what he can do, so, um, but all of them across the board. Um, I think Coach Carlisle has been tremendous for them and it's been a lot of fun to watch and, I, you know, I hope they beat the Bucks. <laughs> We'll go in the back right, standing on the side there. Kaylin, Mickey Shuey with the IBJ. Um, you entered the league at an interesting time for it as it gets ready to take on media rights and there's more sponsorship opportunities. Let's fast forward, whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Where do you hope the league is when you leave it at that point? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Honestly, like I feel like it's hard to really imagine what the league can be because I feel like it's a place where a lot of people can't even wrap their head around. Like I feel like that's where it can go. Um, obviously, the new media rights deal that can be negotiated can be life-changing for a lot of players in this league. It's going to be a huge deal. Um, but also, like, expansion. I think expansion is really important. Um, this is... One of the most, this is the most competitive league in the world. There's 144 spots, but really there's not 144 spots. It's less than that. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is just continue to give it an opportunity, um, continue to attract fans from the college game. I think that's the biggest thing we've seen in college is, you know, when people gave it an opportunity and actually watched it, they continue to come back for more. And it's the same thing with the WNBA. When you go and buy a ticket or turn on the TV, it's, you see how good it is. Um, so I think continue to attract fans in. Um, and they're going to see how amazing it is and how skilled these players are and how fun it is to support and watch. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. And, you know, that'll take it to a place that a lot of people probably can't even imagine. We'll stay back right standing there. Uh, Caitlin, Reggie Edwards, Indie Sports Daily. I've got to ask, with yourself being from Iowa, how much pride did you take in what you guys were able to accomplish at the University of Iowa? Being the number one pick, how much did that mean to you? And then also seeing the fans from Iowa follow you here <laughs> and being as excited as they are. Yeah, I mean, obviously what we were able to accomplish there was super special. And to be a kid from Des Moines, Iowa and go two hours away to college and go to a place that hadn't been to the Final Four since... 1993 with C. Vivian Stringer and obviously she had a lot of amazing teams and um, you know like uh, Coach Dunn said I think the biggest thing is like uh, Dr. Grant was the for on the forefront of Title IX. The University of Iowa was on the forefront of Title IX and to me I think it's one of the only places in the country that you know supports women's sports for 50 years like consistently across the board, not just women's basketball. Like, you go to the University of Iowa and every single sport is supported in the exact same way. Um, and I think that's exactly what women's sports can be in our country. It's just giving them the opportunity, giving them the resources, investing in them the exact same way. Um, but, you know, that was a huge reason I went there. But obviously to accomplish what we accomplished, it, it comes with a, a little more sense of, a, sense of pride um, to wear Iowa across your chest and know that you're representing the people of your state that have supported you for so long. And um, I know there's thousands of new Fever fans, so um, you know I couldn't be more excited. They're passionate about women's basketball. They've been passionate about women's basketball, um, and those those fans don't just say it. Like they'll constantly s show up and support, and they know what's happening. Like they're rowdy. Like they get fired up. They love it. Um, so they're good fans to have, and I expect a lot of them to to be in the building uh, this next season. James, go Caitlin, ahead. James Boyd, the Athletic, right here. Um, you talked about earlier about giving yourself grace. I had the same conversation with Aaliyah last year about giving yourself grace when you're trying to be great. What have you learned about that process throughout your career and in what ways do you 
try to seek to find ways to give yourself grace? Yeah, well, I think I was a little bit of a head case starting my college career. Like, I just expected so much of myself constantly, and also I wanted Iowa to be so good all the time. Um, and I, you know, when I committed to Iowa, like I said, we're going to go to the Final Four, so I felt like there was a lot of pressure for me to, to accomplish that. But um, once I really, like, relied on the people around me and realized not everything's going to be perfect, I feel like that's when I really played my best basketball and really thrived and kind of matured in that way. Um, but, yeah, I think... Grace is a thing for everybody that everybody can use in their life. Not everybody's perfect. People make mistakes. Um, and yeah, I think that's just the biggest thing is like, this, there's gonna be learning curves for me. I'm not gonna come out here and score 40 points a game. Like, that's not what I'm gonna do. I think it's just, you know, learning from the amazing people that I have around me and having a lot of fun, but also like, don't lose who I am. Like, that's what's got me to this point. Continue to be myself. And I think a lot of good will come from that. We'll go back second row in the middle. Uh, Caitlin, George Bremer with uh, CNHI Sports Indiana. Uh, my wife played Division Three college basketball, but it was a different era. She didn't have the WNBA, and she said she imagined playing against like Michael Jordan, Larry Bird when she was hitting game-winning shots in her driveway. She wanted to know who you imagined playing against when you were growing up, uh, but also just the importance of this league and, and the representation for young girls. Yeah, I grew up loving the Minnesota Lynx. I probably shouldn't say that anymore. And Tamika Ketchings, of course. So, um, <laughs> But no, that was obviously the closest WNBA team from where I grew up. Uh, Minneapolis was four hours from uh, my house. And, you know, obviously they had a dynasty there that was obviously really easy to cheer for. But I think, you know, this league is very important. I think Having young girls, young boys, you know, see women accomplishing really great things at the highest level and showing them that, you know, sport teaches you a lot of life lessons. Having young girls involved in sport, I think that's like the best thing that has happened to me is, you know, it's taught me so much more about life than it has basketball. You know, it's brought me a lot of lifelong friendships. It's done some really amazing things for my family. Um, it's taken me to places I really have never, you know, would have imagined. So I think the more eyeballs you can get on this league, you know, the better off this world's going to be. So, um, you know, I'm just excited to, to join the league and, and be a part of that. Go back to Bob, second row on the right. Caitlin, Bob Kravitz with uh, Indianapolis Monthly Magazine. What was that Saturday Night Live uh, experience like? Peyton once said it was the most nerve-wracking thing he's ever been through when he hosted. And yeah. when will you host? I don't think I'm ready for all that. That would be terrifying. I was terrified for a three-minute skit, so. Um, but it was incredible. I, I actually flew from L.A. to New York, and I went right to the set. And I woke up at 7 a.m. in L.A., went right to the set, and obviously the show doesn't start till 11.30, so I was, like, just chugging Coke all night, like, trying to stay awake, coffee, soda, um, but it, it was fun. You know, they kind of just throw you right into the fire. I know I said I wrote the jokes. Obviously, I didn't write the jokes. I'm not that funny, um, but I don't know. It was good. Like, it was a good platform for women's sports. Everybody loved it, um, and that was, like, a, a great show. Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling, Chris Stapleton, like, Kate McKinnon, like, so many amazing people, like, came back, and um, it was fun to be a part of. Like, was so nervous when I was like right behind the screen before they like rolled me into the set and we went live like my heart was about to explode out of my chest um, but it was, a, it was a good little skit I was fun to be a part of and hopefully I can you know go back and do it again sometime go back uh, to Dave first row on the right one, one more 100 days to the Olympics how important is for you to make that team how does that stack with mm -hmm. all the other things you have going on right now yeah, obviously I would, you know, love to be on the Olympic team and be in Paris in 2024, but, you know, that's not up to me. I think just going about my business and doing exactly what I have done my entire career is the most important thing, and obviously my focus is completely here now, too, and um, I actually still need to earn my degree, too, so I need to graduate college first, um, or else my mom might kill me. Um, <laughs> but, no, I think, like, that's a dream. Like you grow up watching the Summer Olympics. To me, it's better than the Winter Winter Olympics. Um, you know, I want to be on that team. I want to be an Olympic gold medalist one day, and um, it would it really just be a dream come true. But you know, everybody knows how competitive you know 
women's basketball is in our country. So, um, you know, it'll be hard for, you know, really anybody to make that team. Chris, you got one on the right. Do you remember that 2012 finals when the Fever beat the Lynx? Did a young Caitlin Clark cry about that? <laughs> well, I was 10 years old, so it's a bit fuzzy. But, yeah. <laughs> I think we'll go to Zoom here now. We've got Sean Schultz. Sean, do you want to start for us? Sure. Sean Schultz, WNBA Swish. Uh, hi, Caitlin. I was just wondering, what about the city of Indianapolis are you looking forward to the most? Is it the people, exploring uh, shops and cafes, what? Looking forward to the most in Indianapolis. Honestly, like, this might sound very, like, small city of me, but, like, it seems like a bigger Des Moines in a way, obviously a little bit bigger than Des Moines. Um, so that's what I'm most excited about. I'm not, like, a huge big city girl, so... Um, I feel like this is a perfect spot for myself, a place that loves basketball. Um, but more than anything, like this is in the Midwest. Um, people might think I'm crazy for wanting to stay in the Midwest, but like that's just who I am. That's where my roots are. Um, I love the people here. Um, so I think that's what I'm most excited about of, you know, having an opportunity to come to an organization like this and be in a place where there can be a lot of support for it and uh, have a lot of people around me that I really love. Then we go to Brad Lake next. Brad, go ahead. Hi, Caitlin. Brad Lake, WBB Nation and w NBA Swish. Can you please speak to what it means to have such an awesome coach in Christie and her coaching staff coaching you this year? And how do you feel that they can help you transition your game from the college to the pros? Yeah, I think, you know when coming out like that was a big bonus for me and a big plus um and a pro that I went down a coach that really loves women's basketball and wants to make it great but also is going to push her players and um you know that's exactly what I want I think being coached is the biggest thing that has allowed me to be where I am today like coach Bluter never stopped coaching me no matter how many wins we had no matter how many points I scored like she just coached me and always knew there was more and I, um, I think coach would say the exact same thing. I think she probably sees there's a lot more that she can get out of me. She'd probably yell at me for my defense at some point. Um, um, but <laughs> I'll probably learn to love it, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you <laughs> or make up with it with my offense. I don't know. But um, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just excited. I mean, you know, to, it's a new chapter. It's new faces. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is like being able to listen and learn and be surrounded by so many amazing people, not only the coaching staff and the front office and the entire organization, but obviously the players too. Like those are the, you know, people to my right and to my left that I can lean on with for anything. Um, so I'm just, you know, really grateful and lucky. Go to Willie Ramirez. Willie, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, we've heard a lot of the draft picks ask who, which players they're looking forward to playing against. I'm curious if you have thought about or you're excited about city or cities that you're uh, looking forward to playing in and teams again, the, the team as a whole. Yeah, I got asked this a lot after the draft. And honestly, like I said, like, I'm excited to play everybody. Like, that's how talented this league is. Like, there's not a single night where you show up to a game and it's like, ah, like I can relax a little bit. Like, no, like this league is so competitive. Like you better bring it every single night. Um, and every single team has somebody on it that it's like, I grew up idolizing or I looked at them with like big eyes, like, oh my gosh, like you're the coolest thing in the world. So for me, like that'll just be super cool traveling around to all these cities, to all these new arenas and venues and getting to play against the best in the world. Like that's exactly what I signed up and signed up for and dreamed of. So um, I don't think it's any like one player specifically or one team specifically. I think it's just, you know, the league in general. Got two more on Zoom. Uh, Nathan Addison, then we'll be followed by Blake Silverman. Nathan, go ahead. Hey, Caitlin. Nathan Addison, the PR announcement. Uh, I was wondering, you know, with the nation, you know, salivating over your ability to shoot the three ball and make plays, is there any underrated part of your game um, that most people don't know about uh, that you're waiting to uh, display? Display, And also, um, you know, when it comes to the first team dinner, 
would you be the first person willing to pay for everybody whenever y'all go out to a restaurant? Uh, Sure, of course. Why not? <laughs> Come on now. Let's all go out. <laughs> um, but I think the part of my game that is underlooked the most, I think, is just my passing. I think, um, you know, everybody wants to fall in love with the scoring and the long threes. I think it's my passing. Like, I just, I love setting my teammates up for success. I feel like I can kind of see the game develop a little bit um, faster and, you know, before a play even occurs. And I think, um, my teammates can see that as well. Um, so I, th I would probably say that part of it. And obviously, I get to play with the best of the best of the world now. So why wouldn't I want to feed them the ball? Um, especially with Lalia. I'm just like, lay up, lay up, lay up, lay up. <laughs> Come on, give me an assist. Let's go. <laughs> Got time for one more on Zoom. Uh, Blake, go ahead. Blake Silverman, Winsider. Caitlin, congratulations. Uh, you mentioned Erica as a bad bad you can lean on what were some of your initial conversations like with her and what was it like seeing Erica and your other teammates have the 22 Clark jerseys ready right after you were officially <laughs> a member of the Beaver? I mean, I think it's just her energy. Like she has like just such a, an amazing personality about her, but also like she wants the best for every single person on that team. And I think that's just so obvious the way she goes about her business, the way she talks about people, the way she carries herself, uh, the way she was jumping up and down after I got picked and put on the jersey immediately. Like, uh, I don't think she could be more excited. And you no, know, how lucky am I to come into an organization with somebody that's been in the league and understands it, but also wants me to do so well. Like, you can't ask for anything better. So I'm just very thankful and I'm excited. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just very lucky. We'll go back in the room. Uh, we yeah, Caitlin, you mentioned when you committed to Iowa, you set a goal of trying to get to the Final Four. Have you set any goals for your rookie season? Honestly, like, I haven't really thought about it a ton. I think the biggest thing is, you know, we want to get back to the playoffs. Like, um, like I think that's the biggest thing. Win a, win a lot of basketball games. Um, I think for myself, like, continue to be me, have a lot of fun, give myself grace. Um, yeah, I think everything else is kind of take care, takes care of itself when you just go about your business like that. But, you know, I, I really hope to help this organization win a lot. Um, I feel like that's been something I've been able to do at, you know, every single level I've played at. So um, I think that's the biggest goal for every single person in this room. There you got time for one more in the first row on the right. Okay. So, so Rachel, Rachel with, with WRTV. Um, I know you just talked about giving yourself grace, but how do you hope to continue your legacy here? And since this is the last one, what else can you say to our fans? Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, like, I don't, I think my legacy is just something that has come with the way I've carried myself every single day. And, um, you know, the person you see on the court, like, I'm super competitive, I'm super fiery, but at the end of the day, like, for me, like, basketball isn't the end-all be-all and I feel like that's why I've been able to have so much success is like I don't like find that much like gratification in everything that I've been able to do like obviously the final fours have been great like the awards whatever it is what it is like to me like all that stuff is in a storage closet like it, it doesn't matter like I've had so much fun like the worst part about leaving college to me was like leaving my best friends it wasn't like the basketball side of it it wasn't how easy it was to score points like it was never that for me like um, it was my best friends, but obviously I think coming here is like continue to go about the go about everything my same the same way um, I hope to you know make an impact on this community make an impact on women's basketball um, Far beyond what I'm able to do on the court I think that's super important and I think it's just something that was instilled in me from a young age Like it can't just be basketball all the time like you need to be a very well-rounded person and everything that you do and um, It'll be nice not to have to do school anymore. I don't have to worry about that. Um, can, I already spent a lot of time not doing school and playing a lot of basketball. So I think just, you know, you know making an impact on this community, having a lot of fun, um, enjoying it, interacting with our fans. Um, you know, I think our fans will, you know, come to find, you know, whether they're new or whether they've been Fever fans, how amazing this organization is and how, how much they care and support women's basketball and they want to take it to, to greater heights. So that. Thank you, Caitlin. Let's hear it one more time for Caitlin Clark.
I want to thank all of you very much for coming out this morning and sharing this special morning with all of us. You know, there are a lot of Die Hard Fever fans in this room, but none bigger than our own mayor who is here today, Mayor Joe Hogsett. Thank you very much for coming. And we look forward to seeing you at Fever Games here in about a month. That'll wrap up our presentation today. We want to West Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top, woo, woo. We on the top, woo.